Welcome back to the course on BS76M1. You may be new here, you might not have watched the rest of this course, you might have just jumped to this exam bit, in which case, you're a fucking arsehole who set yourself up to fail. Please watch the rest of the course, because it all comes together as a big package. However, when you're doing a regulation course, all you really want to do is pass this exam. I get that. You want to pass the exam, but that's not what learning to use the regulations and being able to use regulations and staying recent, current, and usable and being able to just use the regulations is all about. So please watch the rest of it. But I get it. The end game is the exam, which I'm going to talk to you about now. People get stressed out about the exam for various reasons now. If we look at the actual course for BS7671 on Sitting Guilds, which you are free to download, just Google Sitting Guilds. 2382 is it? You can download the uh, the package that is issued to training staff to build the course. It has a guided learning hours of 35 hours. To be honest, I think that's fucking ridiculous. Guided learning hours mean you sat there while I lecture you in a classroom. Not a fucking chance. Maybe if you're brand new to the game, you've never touched the regulations before. Yeah, you could drag it out to 35 hours because you'd be wanting to learn the regulations. However, I think it's a very old hat way of looking at it. I think we all need to learn to reference and do what I'm telling you to do in this video, basically. So, yeah, you do 35 hours, along with a total qualification time of 40 hours, so five hours in your own time. However, you're running this in your own time completely. Whether you just leave this online exam now, because I'm not in a classroom, go to a training provider and just book an exam, which you are totally free to do. I do believe that a sitting guilds provider has to provide the option just to sit exams. Um... You could watch this course and go and do an exam. And I, I, please do that. Please save yourself the money. Please just go and spend the 50 quid book in the exam. Um, you could be watching this as a precursor to doing the regulations exam. And it could be assisting you alongside classroom teaching. Whichever one it is, that's what the uh, the course dictates on the Sitting Guild website. Just so you know. Now, nitty gritty what you're here for. The exam. The exam is two hours long. It will normally, as far as I know, I don't know anyone doing it any otherwise, be taken at a computer. Normally a laptop. Really boring things that I tell people is, do you like using the mouse? I like using the mouse. I don't like using touchpads. If you need a mouse, ask for a mouse. Two hours is not a long time when you reacquaint yourself with using a touchpad on a fucking computer. So please make sure you're set up properly to do it. I'll just drop that in there now. But two hours is a reasonably long time. You'll get 60 questions from the current pool of questions, which I think reigns in the I think it's a few hundred at least, maybe a thousand, I don't know. But I do know if you sit multiple times, you start to see them reappear. But these 60 questions from the pool will be provided randomly. It is two minutes a question. People people always talk about this two minutes a question thing, yeah? And they sit there and look and go, that's not very long. Well, two minutes is quite a long time because we're going to talk about something I like to call freebies in a minute that you're going to get and other things. In fact, tell you what, this is two minutes. Watch this. Got to do something for two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Give me two minutes in time. Two minutes. Two minutes. How long are we now? This is 20 seconds in. What can I do for two minutes? Oh, one minute. I can work out how long's left. They got a countdown timer, uh, but we're only like 30 seconds in now. It's a fucking long time, isn't it? I go, I'm gonna find something, I'm gonna find. Uh, I'm just gonna look at the book, I'm far too interested. So what? Let's go to find something I didn't know in section 5, which is section 5 there. Something about groups containing more than one circuit. How far are we in now? Like 51, 52, 53. Fucking, I'm not having a minute in yet. Cables in thermal insulation, who gives a fuck? Connection of multi wire and far wire and very fine wire conductors. Connection of multi wire in order to avoid inappropriate separation and spread of spreading injury wires. Fine wire shall be used and treated, soldering. You can, no, you can tin the end of fine wires there, can you? Tin the of very fine wire. Oh, and not permissible at connection. Soldering, tinning of the whole conductor at the end of the multi wire, fine wire, very fine wire conductors is not permitted. You can't tin soldered ends of fine wires. Soldering, tin conductor ends on very fine wire, fine wire conductors is not permissible. It's not allowed. You're not allowed to tin 
You are not allowed to solder the ends of wires to make them tinned to go to a mechanical connection. You've clearly got to use some sort of lug or crimping device. There you go. Last build with two minutes a minute. Do it end? Because we've still got like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. That was two minutes. That's a fucking long time. If you sat through that, great. What you got to remember is that two of those minutes won't answer some questions. 20 seconds will answer some questions. So, yeah, on average, it does work out to two minutes a question. But it's not like that. You'll get some easy ones at the start. You'll get some you have to sweat over. Don't be obsessed with completing every question in two minutes because they don't all work like that. Are they in order? Which is a big problem, have you? So, yes, as long as I've been doing it, and as far as I know, they are supposed to be in order. What that means is, to you, taking the exam is, the questions will flow through part one, through part two, through part three, through part four, through part five, through part six, through part seven, through part eight, and into the annexes. However, that does not mean that you never turn your page in your book backwards. For a start, you may have made an error. And you may have made an error on a question in the location you found the answer. And you may find yourself moving back because you're correcting yourself. Also, part five is quite a big section. Yeah, it's a good chunk of pages, look. You may find yourself moving backwards and forwards within that part. You shouldn't find yourself at be on a special location question, then darting back to section one. But they do generally fall into an order of following through the book's parts. Please don't get bogged down that you never turn the page backwards because that is a big mistake. The pass mark is 60%, which is not a fucking lot, to be honest. Yeah? It's a lot if you don't know what you're doing. And it feels like a lot at the very beginning when you start to learn questions, which I'll talk about later. But it's not a massive amount. They are not really testing your ability to answer questions on the regs from your head. They are testing your ability to utilise the book to find out an answer to a question that you set to you, which is what I'm teaching you on this course. I ought to get a stamp that says that or a t-shirt because I keep fucking saying it. So yeah, don't get bogged down all those things, lads and ladies. It's just two hours sat on a computer to get 60%. You can get almost half the questions wrong, you fucking dick splash. But people do make it hard for themselves drink permitted materials the only permitted material you need in this exam is the regulations that are current at the time you're doing the exam in this case it's uh, bsm 671 2002 amendment 2 take a fucking calculator to every exam you do the amount of people i get on courses well for a start people turn up that fucking regs books to a regs exam you people what the fuck yeah I get people turn up and say, look, I ain't got a book, can I buy one straight away? Fear one. I get people turn up to regs exams and go, oh, I didn't know I'd need the book. Of course you fucking need the book, you penis. It's all about the fucking book. Honestly. But yeah, people will turn up without the permitted materials. You'll need that for the whole course. Don't rock up within the clean film. Get it open and start looking at it. You're going to give yourself a really hard time. I'm sorry to be harsh about this, but harsh is sometimes fair. Calculators. Bring a calculator. In fact, just... Go on Amazon now and buy yourself a scientific calculator, yeah? Have it delivered, get familiar with it, write your name on it and carry it to every single exam you do in your entire life. Then you have a calculator that you are familiar with and know how to use. There is nothing worse than trying to use a tool or a piece of equipment you have acquired 65 seconds before you are required to use it. Yeah, you wouldn't do it with a crash helmet, would you? You wouldn't do it with a fucking motorbike or a car. You wouldn't jump in and start driving it. You'd want to associate yourself with it. Why is the calculator any different? The amount of people in exams go, I don't know how to work the calculator. Well, I couldn't give a fuck. The exam has started. You have not brought a calculator. That is your fucking bad decision to make, dickhead. It's like rocking up to a swinging party with no Johnny's or something like that. You know what I mean, yeah? It's your fucking problem, not mine. Don't start moaning at me because you can't work calculator. Because honestly, me and every other tutor in the world... Couldn't give a shit that you're unprepared. Soz, that's how it is. Also, bring some pens and ask for some plain white paper provided by the examiner because so it's not going to notes on it, yeah? And then 
You are free to jot down regulation numbers, page numbers if you really fucking want, regs, words. The answer to the question like oh, on question one, I've put A and it's regulation 1.2.3.4 or whatever. It's incredibly useful to have pens and paper available in an exam to take notes, yeah? Remember the exams on the computer, there's nowhere else to take notes except in your Xbox. You might want a highlighter as well, you might want to highlight things. You can take post-it notes in, all that stuff. You can do all that. You might want to post it up every page where you find an answer so you can check it afterwards. All those things are available to you. Stationery, calculators, pens and pencils are such useful equipment, which is why everyone has fucking stuff like this on the desk, in it? So why would you not want that in an exam? You fucking penis. Finally, bring a drink in. Don't like bringing four cans of Stella in. You're going to get people wound up. But what I would suggest is you bring a drink in where the top is sealable. So I would personally, in my lessons when I'm doing it at college, I always ask people to put open tops on the floor because certificates end up wearing tea. Bring a screw top bottle of drink so you can secure it back up or bring a mug that has a lid on it like a flask type thing because you'll get thirsty. And you don't be sat there at question 15 with a mouth like Gandhi's flip-flop, if that's okay to say that. Is that, is that PC nowadays? I don't know. Um, you don't want to be there dying of thirst. Yeah, take some sweets and take some chewing gum. I don't fucking give a fuck. Make yourself comfortable. You're going to be sat there for two hours answering questions on the exam. I have to pause now because my throat hurts from shouting at you moron. And I'm back. I hope you can see by the, by the agitation of my voice that from years and years of doing this course, the fact that you can have someone in the class that's decent, yeah? And then on the Friday... They just turn up and totally mong it because they've not got the regs, a calculator, pens and pencils and a drink. You know what I mean? Sort your life out. You've geared up for this exam for one, two, three, five days. And then you rock up to the exam badly prepared. Don't be that guy. You look like a dickhead. Don't be, although that girl. Although girls don't generally do it. It's mostly guys. Anyway. Tabbing and highlighting. I've done a whole video on tabbing and I forgot to mention highlighting. Yeah, you can highlight your regs book. My regs book's got highlights in. I'll find one. Now, this is my new regs book. Oh, there you go. Look, I've got general highlighted in there. Right, I've not really started going through my new regs book yet, highlighting it a lot because I want to cross reference it um, with the old one. But highlighting and tabbing are permitted. Yeah, you're allowed to have tabs in regs book. You're allowed to have things highlighted. You have a thing called what I call freebies. That's a question where you know the answer. Straight up, bosh, know the answer. Just fucking answer it then and move on. Yeah? Even better, answer it and flag it, which I'm going to come to next time, so you can check it when you come back. But if you know the fucking answer to a question, you're like, I know the answer to that and it's there, put that fucking answer down. you just got yourself two minutes, haven't you? Yeah? Don't be afraid to bag a freebie. Flagging is a thing, not that you're flagging near the exam because you've run out of water, but you can place a little flag on the question so you know to come back to it. If you answer a question you're not sure, flag it. You get a question. You get four options to answer it. If you don't answer it, 0% of fuck all is fuck all. If you guess, you have a 25% chance of getting it right. If you're stuck between two answers, then you pick one, I think you get a 50% chance of getting it right, don't you? I'm not sure, but either way, flag it because then you can move on. And I'll come to a little bit about our questions, answering questions in a moment. Also, another tactic that I sometimes teach people is to write 1 to 60 on a piece of paper. And then, as you're going through the book, wherever you answer the question next to it, write, and I hate to say this, but it's the quickest way of doing it, yeah? Write the page number you found it on. Only time I'll have to use the page numbers. So, right, question 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 60 before you start. On question 14, write flag P67, page 67. Then when you come back to it to try and check your answer because you flagged it, you can quickly go, well, I was round 67. Oh, I know what, I'm in totally the wrong place now and develop it from there. If you get time to do that, that's what you've got pens and notepaper for. But don't be afraid to make a note of the location or you can use a post-it note in the book if you really want. There are loads of options in exams, people. I often just tell you what works best for me and what I've seen other people doing. This is the exam weights. This is an interesting use of tactics, basically. So the weighting is this. Section one, you'll have four questions from it, allowing for 7% of the overall score. Question two, you'll have definitions, two questions which will account for 3% of your overall score. Question uh, part three, 
Six questions, 10%. Part four, 15 questions, 25%. Part five, 14 questions, 23%. Part six, 7%. Part seven is 12% and part eight is 13%. Right, I'll tell you how I see this, yeah? Number one, section one, can be a bit of a faff, I find, but it accounts for 7%. Definitions, you'll know if you've been asked a definition question, it'll say, what does this word mean? It only accounts for 3%. The general characteristics of electrical installations accounts for 10% of the book. Or 10% of the exam, should I say. Um, but part three, this is where the magic starts to happen, yeah? 10% of the entire exam is in these pages. It is. I'll read it out to you. One, two, sorry, wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is... 1% of the exam, virtual on every single one of those pages. Six questions on part three, and it's that fucking long. You need to be able to recognise that you are answering questions from part three and find the answer in there. There is time. Six questions is 12 minutes. You could read that entire section in six and use the other six minutes for answering the questions. That's why knowing these weights is important. And I'm going to link to a video on this playlist where Sam off the Electrician's Podcast is talking about his experience doing the re doing the exam, which just come out of the day I'm recording this in the morning, which is why I've hung on to this exams one. And he said it was really a game changer for him that he knew he was only dealing with this little section. That's why you need to know these weights, people. You need to know them. Yeah, as we go to section four, 25% of the questions is in this section. Section five, 23% of the questions is in this section. Section six is fucking tiny. It is. Four questions in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's about eight pages. I'm not saying it can't. It is that. Four questions. Seven percent of the exam is in there. Now, here's the biggest. These are fucking free. These are free questions, yeah? Part seven is a stonker of a section. It goes on for pages and pages and pages. However... Seven questions, I absolutely guarantee they'll be on se seven separate individual special locations. Well, in the front of special locations, in the chapter, so in the contents I've told you all to use, you'll see there that each special location has its own reg number, 701, 702, 703. So if I get one on swimming pools, I'm just going to look down here, 702 is swimming pools, section 701 I was on about earlier was a location containing a bath or shower. Section 02, swimming pools with the basins, is that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine pages and two, four of them are drawings. Yeah. Section 7, you should be smashing it out of the park and getting all them 12%. They should be easily referenced in the book. They're all in section 7. And then you've got understanding the information contained with part 8 and the appendices, which is all new. But knowing them ways is important. Don't let it rule your life. But what you've got to remember is... Four and five are where the real magic happens. You can't pass on four or five alone, though. It'll only get you just under fifth there. You need to come out with some of the others. But some people say it's cheating. I don't personally allow my students to take those weights, and I think it just it, it diminishes from the policy of the exam. But those weights are there, and that is how the that is how sitting guilds deem their questions should be issued to a learner in those weights advertised on that screen. So it is quite important to know that the bulk of your work will be done in sections four and five, but then again... When you're on site, the bulk of your work is in sections four and five. The installation you're doing is from four and five. So, yeah, keep an eye on it. Don't let it rule your life, though. But, yeah, section seven, they should be free questions for you. That's the end. That's the exam of the bit on the exam. I need to blow my nose. I'm back. Don't let the exam rule your life. I know it's hard to do that because at the end of the day, that's all you're fucking there for. Very few people are there just because they love the regs. I have learned to love the regs. I enjoy using them and finding things out from them and interrogating them and getting stuff out of it. Maybe it's because I'm a bit sad. Maybe it's because I do design. Maybe it's because I like being a clever bastard and picking on people on site who tell me I'm wrong and I go in here and find it, yeah? But I've learned to enjoy and embrace the regs as more than just something that I get out for an exam. And I suggest that you do that too. That's what being a proper engineer is all about, is understanding the documentation that is associated with your job. This course, I've specifically designed it not to get you through an exam. Well, 
I want you to pass the exam, but I want you to come out of this course and be able to use and understand books in the way they're written. Again, I waited to record this one because I knew Sam from the Electrician's podcast was doing it this morning. He did a podcast like this morning, which I've watched. It's linked in this video's um, it's linked to this video's playlist. And he ba- why are the, he bangs on about things like why are the questions written like that? Because they've always been written like that. Why is the book written like that? Because that's how books are written. Why are they laid out like that? Because that's how all books are laid out. Once you can work your way around this bastard, you can work your way around the electricity at work regulations, um, JSPs that I use, on-site guides, every single other book, guidance notes, they all follow the same principles, the parts, the chapters. Once you've done it, remember the story about the girl that came that was um, a student. She just knew how to use a book to use it. You have not got to keep requalifying for these courses and paying training companies money. All you've got to do is concentrate and examine how this book is structured and keep current with it and learn how to use it. Then, when the regulations come up, it's just a case of rocking up, getting the question, using the book to answer it, and moving on. Like it would be with manufacturer's instructions or anything else that you're using on a day-to-day basis. So, yeah, you are there to pass the exam, but please... Use the regulations and use them how they're meant to be. Use it like a book. Use it for reference and learn that skill. I've banged on enough now. Good luck with your exam, although this course is not finished. Because I'm going to do the questions next. How exciting!